what's going on world gamers japan so we're going to talk uh more about ghost of yote so i got some people on my channel and then i got some people on other threads too that uh are at disagreement that this game won't be affected by the activists that they've chosen and the new direction that they're taking and of course we need some more answers all right so i think they're a little bit blind and naive i'm not saying that people need to entirely skip the game already until we find out more information whether this game is going to be good or not but the thing is is to understand what we're attacking and what the issue is so one let's start off with the success of ghost of tsushima or jin sakai it was wonderful uh wonderfully crafted i have a platinum on the game i got 100 percent on it I was definitely looking forward to the sequel and the continuity of his story. Uh, the DLC was good, you know. Uh, I felt like there's some things that that could have did to make him even more interesting in the next game because he needed more personality, more growth. Because uh, he isn't the best character in the world, but if you look at his combat style and the stuff he went through, that that's what makes him awesome. Now, so the development team that did that and, and everybody that was part of that at Sucker Punch, they had made a huge jump coming from the Infamous series. You know what I mean? And I, you, you've seen their 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 growth. And then the game sold like over 12 million copies. It did well on PC, maybe 13 lately when it got super cheap. The point was that it was phenomenal. So why mess that up, right? Uh, and then we get to this game and then we see the trailer. At first, everything is good, right? Until people started to find out, you know, what happened to Jin Sakai. I don't have a problem if you change the protagonist, but it depends on how you do it. And you proved to me so I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that um, you can make a very good game if it's the same team, right? Now, here's my thing with it. And here's my thing with people that are attacking the game, which I don't have a problem with that. Not attacking the game, but attacking the invasion. It's that you're attacking this activist and you're attacking the woke ideology. You should always do that. And for the people who don't understand that, here's why. Because when you give something like that a step, it tries to take a mile. And then it'll keep on going farther and farther. So you have to push it out and get rid of it. If not something that grows and gets worse and then when it gets too big it becomes a bigger problem so let's go ahead and get into this like and subscribe let me know what y'all think and we're gonna re-highlight some things here one let's look at uh, erica ishii's mindset so we can zoom in a little bit actually here now um she says until trans actors think about this are fairly considered for cis roles it's imperative that trans actors have the opportunity to play trans roles. Now, here's my thing with this. If somebody is allowed to uh, voice act a character, that means that the company themselves hired them. What changed at Sucker Punch during a time that they had an organic process with a masculine principle to make them want to highlight uh, the character we see now? and to choose her knowing what she just said there we don't even know the identity of this character yet and a lot of people are saying it doesn't affect that you don't know that look at what she just said she wants to play trans roles what if atsu is a trans do we want to know how messed up that's going to be and how corrupt that's going to be in japan uh, y'all can understand this too because this is once again your, your setting in feudal japan things already got messed up with shadows sasuke with shadows do you understand how wrong that would be? Because once again, what does that have to do with that time period? Absolutely nothing. And if you choose that type of voice and that type of spirit, which is a Baphomet spirit to play that role, then it is something that is going to affect the main character, whether people think that or not, because it's the voice behind it. It's empowering that in English, I'm playing in Japanese. Uh, if I you know, play the game and decide, we, there's still so much we have to find out. But that's, that's just something to think about. If you guys don't want to think about that and you want to be that ignorant, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not telling anyone that they don't have to not buy the game. I never once said that. We have a lot we still need to figure out. But all I'm doing is I'm highlighting why people would have a problem and why they just don't understand. Out of millions of people in the world, or billions of women, even if there's one billion, why are you choosing her? And you know what she said right here. I used to love Harry Potter. Went to every man I released, cosplayed, was even in a Harry Potter themed improv group. Now I'm happy to instead support 
and be a part of fantasy narratives where all are welcome. Trans community, we deserve our own. Okay, you get your own then. Better magic. I will always fight for that. So in her mind, it's all about the trans ideology, identity. Right? That's what she's saying. We're not we're not arguing with that. Same thing here. I want to play a trans role. Just think about that. I've dreamed of this my entire life, but I still can't believe I'm part of art like this. Queer gender actor. I'm gender fluid. So this is confusion. There's male and female. You like I said, I can go cut the balls off of a male dog. He's still a male. I can put makeup all over him. It's still a male. I scream as I shoulder because you can't change the spirit. Only the creator can. I screamed. I scream as I shoulder my way past a massive line for the woman's restroom and sprint straight into the man's stalls. Guys, this is a mental disorder. That is foul. Look, any man that does not agree with me on this, I think that there's something wrong with you and you are also troubled. You, you need to get help. If you walked into the woman's restroom right now, but you didn't know that, you were just kind of trying to rush and just stopped on the way, you didn't see the sign and you saw a bunch of females in there, you're going to feel something inside of you and you're going to say, I need to get out of here, right? Oops, my bad. You know what I mean? You're going to run right back into the man's restroom. Why do, does somebody want to think that it's okay and feel good about saying, I want to go into this restroom and I want to go into that restroom? We're just talking about people that are not mentally well. I don't wish anything terrible upon this person, but basically what I'm saying is that they've seen this, but you still decided to hire her knowing what she wants to get hired and what type of role she wants to play. So we need to find out the identity of Atsu and the people that are attacking it have a right to be because it's like, what is this doing in a game that had nothing to do with this in a time setting in Japan that had nothing to do with this? And uh, we can go down here and, and this is Smash JT site, by the way. Some guy in this Shibuya club tried to grab me and kiss me, so I bit his face, his finger, stole his glasses. Well, I, you know, he shouldn't be doing that. Then ran into the women's bathroom, bathrooms to hide. This is not a bit. But these people believe they have the right to go into both restrooms, and they don't. I, you know, you have to pick and choose a side here, you know. Uh, whatever you are is whatever you are. Um. So, and Demion didn't like that the franchise is built on masculinity is being replaced by a woman. Well, they identify as non-binary, so it's not, not a legit female. Uh, if the game is good and the franchise keeps improving, then, you know, I don't have a problem with that, but it just depends on if, if you're trying to push an identity, right, or an agenda. Because they're the developers, they can create whatever they want uh, to the extent of trying to enforce something on me that isn't gaming related. So, you know, he, he said that, and uh, he, he he realized he was jumping to conclusions. They're, they're way past this, so this is not where I wanted to highlight, but we're, we're getting to her. She says, I really love to see Netflix cast a non-binary or gender-fluid actor as Ed in Cowboy Bebop. It just makes sense. Here we go again. Cowboy Bebop is a man. He, his world is already established. Why do you want to come in there? See, this just gives you the idea of, oh, Jen Sakai. Oh, no, I want to. I would like to see you guys cast some uh, non-binary character in there. Please hire me as the non-binary voice actors. You see how I'm kind of like trying to add this up together? Yeah, y'all understanding uh, my mode of thought here? See where I'm going with this? We got to find out, don't we? Because this is what it's looking like. He says, how about, this is what he said below that. You see the guy next. How about we prioritize good acting before gender or sexuality? And if they happen to be non-binary, great. Meaning, like, if that's just a source and you decided to add that in out of your own organic being, not trying to enforce it. I wonder why you automatically assume the best actor to portray someone non-binary would be cis. You should consider your biases. Yet, somebody who's already what they are by nature, created by somebody organically, you want to change that. That's a hypocritical, delusional statement. As a matter of fact, this type of conversation, the way that they started it, is completely wrong period, this individual right here, who's trying to play Atsu, or who is. Y y yes, it's a twisted, warped mentality. You can't have a conversation with somebody like this. He says, I could say the exact uh, exact thing to you. You should consider your biases. So what he should have just said from the get-go is what I just said about Cowboy Bebop. He's already done. Why, are you, why would you even want to see that? It just shows how 
screwed up their mentality is. And he says, I'm extremely skeptical and rightly so. It's the same concern I've had with many games as of late that attempt to rewrite established norms without the grounding needed to make it work practically. She says, I'm gender fluid or he, she, they, them, whatever. I scream as I shoulder my way past a massive line for the women's restroom and sprint straight into the meds. Now, casting an actor in a game doesn't necessarily mean the game is going to be woke. But let's be honest, more often than not, it seems to head in that exact direction. This is what I'm saying. We have to look at it in a deeper context. And when you dig into Erica Ishii's social media presence, yikes, the only concern or the concern only deepens. Her tweets are extreme, often echoing the same vibes as crazed Kotaku activists, but sometimes, believe it or not, even more aggressively so. So I want you all to think about that. This is where I say, like, what does this have to do with creating a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima and that presence in feudal Japan? Nobody thought like this. This, this, it, this it, it didn't exist. This has nothing to do with that. That's why I say that it, it feels like you're, you're enforcing it. You know what I mean? And that if you want to hire them, they're going to want things to be enforced in a way, too, because that's how they think. Same thing with this individual over here who is a queer osexual gender mancer. These people need help. Like, what the hell is that? The game director of Dragon Age. And you see this is going down, right? They all push the same thing. The gay stuff, the trans, corrupting God's rainbow, saying BLM because the black person is their uh, slave chess piece. And they're going to make it. They're a master victimizing them. They're masters at victimizing people. Uh, but the people who are going to be left alone and, and not messed with are going to be the gays and the trans. But the BLM is it's all corporate stuff. They don't give a damn at all. They're the ones that are leading a Democratic Party and who's been creating ghettos and all that stuff. But we're not going to get too off topic. But the point was, is that when you have people like this, though this person is a director, they want to enforce what they are inside into the game and enforce it on you. But the culture is not built around that. You see? And then they get mad when the majority of people uh, deny it. Of course they're going to deny it because that's not the way the video game industry is and not how it grew the past 30 to 40 years through the Japanese and Caucasian cultures who were developing it and people just played and, and had a great time. Uh, and anyone else that was in there, you were qualified. What's the problem? I don't have a problem if somebody's qualified, you know what I mean? But when you're coming with all this stuff that's not gaming related, creating issues and coming with all this weird stuff, it's like, what does this have to do with gaming development? It has nothing to do with it at all. Let's focus on gaming development issues, community issues between the, the player and, and the developer and the director and the publisher. And, and let's keep it there and, and try to keep that as organic as possible. Otherwise, this stuff is just ridiculous. But this is what I kind of wanted to cover so people can realize why Ghost of Yote can be a problem. And if it turns out to be a problem, remember what I said right here in this video. So we have a lot to be revealed. We have a lot more answers that we would like to have, and we're going to find out a lot more about it um, in the coming months and in the next year. So like I said, like, subscribe, let me know what y'all think. Leave a comment. Japan, leave a comment too. And uh, yeah, we're going to get to the heart of this over time. Just like Assassin's Creed. All right, y'all. Peace out.